always felt I'm behind the eight ball. Maybe that was the reason I ended up having the success I had because I worked extra hard. I never rested. I never, I just, I always felt, you know, I'm, I'm behind the eight ball. These guys have more experience. They have, and even when I, you know, after going to the US and having a lot of success, success for five or eight years on the sort of that pro circuit over there with a lot of the, the big Olympic distance races like Lifetime Fitness and Chicago, LA, St. Croix. I did those races with great success for five or eight years. And then I finally stepped up to Ironman distance. It was, it was like deja vu all over again. I, I thought I'm uh-huh. behind the ball because Norman and Farris and Tim and Macca, they've all been here for five or 10 years. Yep. They've experienced, they've got the edge on me. So, yeah, it was like going back to the beginning again and thinking I'm going to have to work extra hard just to be able to compete with these guys. And you were more of a short a short racer in the a short distance racer in the beginning, right? You weren't doing full Ironmans at that point, were you? That's what no, you're I saying. Didn't. Yeah, I didn't do my first full until I was 34. So right. um, I'd had good success. I was the half Ironman world champion when I got to Kona. But, you know, halves and fulls are very different. So very different. It's a different and, deal, different game. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the guys I'd been racing at Olympic distance, like in the US, I guess like Craig Walton, Greg Bennett, Simon Lessing, Simon Whitfield, those kind of guys, Hamish Carter. When I would race half Ironmans, it was some of those guys. It was Lessing again and Terenzo, slightly different guys. But then when I went to Ironman, yeah, it was a completely different bunch of guys again. And as I said, they had had success there. Well, when I went there, Macca hadn't, but Norman had won there a couple of times. Farris had won there. Tim had won there a couple of times. Um, you know, Cameron Brown had had four or five podium finishes there. So, yeah, it was just – it felt like almost going back to the start of my career again where I was coming in at the ground floor and I was going to have to, I guess, pay my dues all over again. And, and I was prepared to do it. And, and I think <clears> – <throat> That was always just the mindset that I had. I never walked in. I always had self-confidence, but never in arrogance because my confidence was always measured with realism. Like I was a realist. When I came into the sport as a 20 or 21 year old, I was racing guys my age or who were 22, 23, 25, who'd been doing triathlons for 10 years. So whilst I had dreams and aspirations of being a pro athlete and hopefully a world champion, I was also realistic, realistic enough to understand, well, that's going to take a while because these guys have got a big head start. Yep. And I'm in an endurance sport, which takes years to develop that sort of aerobic conditioning. So, and it was the same when I stepped up to Ironman. I had confidence in myself that, you know, I, can, I could possibly do well at this race because I've, I'm a half Ironman world champion. I've been, I've been beating all the best short course guys. But again, the real, the real is, I guess the realist in me said, well, you know, you're going to have to be patient too, though, because these guys have been here for five or 10 years. Some of them have won here before. So you may just have to find your feet a little bit. And as it turned out, I didn't have to. I got second on debut. And had I probably been a little more confident, I could have done even better. I mean, that's, I mean, there's no question that first race in 07, Macca deserved the title. He was the better athlete on the day. But when I look back at that performance, compared to my later ones, it was way beneath where I was capable of because I was so right. conservative the whole day. Right. I just kept thinking, oh, man, Mark Allen took seven years to win here. He kept collapsing. Welsh kept collapsing. Mac has had six or seven meltdowns. You know, surely I'm not going to be the guy who just waltzes in here and then takes the title. And I was so conservative. and It was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. I was waiting for something bad to happen. And yep, yep. never really got out of second gear in that run. I just kept thinking, oh, better be cautious here, better be conservative. And then when I got to about 33 or 34K and realized, gee, I, I am going to make it here. I am going to get to the end. The race was pretty much done by then. And um, But again, you know, you get what you deserve. At that point, Chris had had six or seven heartbreaking races there. So he had the mental game and the experience sure. and finally got in a position to win and was able to close the deal. That's what his previous six or seven years had taught him there. And I, I was the same. I, I learned as well. I learned in 07 that I could push myself a little harder and the things that I had to do to go to the next level. And then I was able to do that the next two years. Right. So that's a, that's a, 
almost overly uh, mature kind of perspective because the vast majority of us age groupers, we, I mean, that may, I mean, ultra athletes, I think probably go out too hard in, in their er, earlier on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, I don't know why I just had this, uh, well, I, I was a history historian of the sport and a fan of the sport. I'd watched all those Kona coverages on the wide water sports and seen all the infamous meltdowns. Right. Of, and the one that I kept thinking of was Paul and Yubi Fraser, who yep. I think she'd won seven times and then was about to win her eight when she collapsed 200 meters or whatever it was from the finish line. It's like, yep. wow, if someone who's that experienced and that good can get it wrong by that much, Anybody can do it, especially a rookie who comes in here with a bit too much confidence. Um, who am I on my first day here? Who am I to come in here on day one and do yeah. it? So, yeah, they were – even I remember clearly that marathon in 07 when, you know, we were quite lucky in 07. Well, lucky. I guess other guys were unlucky. It had rained in race week in 07, and I didn't know this, but – when it rains in Kona, a lot of the stormwater runs off into the bay, and so you typically you don't swim after it rains there because the, the water can be dirty. I see. And so I went down there to have a swim on the Wednesday morning, three days before the race, and I ran into a guy I knew down there, and he said, well, what are you doing? John Duke, his name was. He was the publisher of Triathlete Magazine. He's like, mate, don't swim. It rained last night. And I looked over, and a few of the other pros were going in for a swim, but I, I took his advice, and I didn't. I went and swam in the pool, and – Sure enough, a whole bunch of guys got sick. Norman got sick. Farris got sick. Rick wow. Kabiki got sick. Um, uh, Cameron Brown. So four or five guys who'd finished top 10 the year before in 06 all got sick. Um, I think Farris pulled out before the gun even went off on the Saturday. He pulled out on race morning. So he'd finished third the year before. Norman, who'd won the year before, he lasted 20 kilometres on the bike and he pulled out vomiting. Oh, my gosh. Rick Kabiki. Ruth Kabiki, who'd finished third the year before, he pulled out, he was sick, and Brownie pulled out. So half the top 10 was gone before the, the race had even started. And, yeah, so I think, or I guess when you look at it from, from that perspective, I thought, wow, you know, things are sort of playing out in my favour, but also being aware of the history of the sport and just how fickle that race can be. Yeah, I was I was very conservative in 07 thinking. And I remember thinking in the run, at any moment, the wheels are going to come off because they came off for everybody else. I mean, sure. sure. Um, and I think when you have that sort of a mindset, it precludes you from accessing your full potential on the day. Um, right. Whilst it, it was still a good race and it's still a very fond memory, you know, to finish second on debut at a race that I'd always – dreamed about racing at and I'd seen on television 20 years before at home in Australia. Yeah. It was very cool to, to be there. Um, yeah, and it was a big lesson in that how the importance of self-belief and not just not just the lip service that a lot of athletes give themselves. You know, it's easy to sit at the press conference and talk about what you're going to do, but it's it's a different thing in in the race, you know, when when the moment of truth arrives to really be able to execute and, and do what you plan to do. Um, and that's what I learned. That's what 07 taught me, to, to go back and how to race a little differently and to be more confident and that I did belong on that that stage, you know, in that, in that arena. And, um, yeah, I obviously took the lessons well.